A Troubled Past Leading to a Troubled Future? Vonda Felbob Brown offers recommendations for a more stable transition in Afghanistan in this final video installment based on her book, Aspiration and Ambivalence. The choices that we as the United States make will have critical impact on whether it will become hopeless in the short term or whether we can still do all that we can to encourage stability and to encourage uh, as much chance that after 2014 it will not fall apart into great instability, uh, that the Taliban will not take over large uh, parts of the country, that civil war will not erupt in, in pockets. So we have responsibility not just to say, oh, it, nothing can be done and run away. We have to think about, even with much reduced resources, no doubt, and much reduced and constricted engagement, how our actions still make a difference, how much they still encourage stability or, uh, or undermine it. The faster we go out, the more we go out, the fewer resources, including military, we have on the ground, the less ability to influence uh, developments that we have. But we still have chips, we still have influence, and we will continue having some influence. And it's important that we keep our eye on the interest that we'll continually have in Afghanistan, as well as um, uh, uh, realize that our interest will best be met if the political uh, dispensation, the political system in Afghanistan is far more legitimate than it has been so far, if the Afghan people can embrace uh, whatever lies past 2014. So what does that require? It requires as much security it can still be accomplished. That means responsibly disengaging with Afghanistan, not running out very fast, not abandoning the training effort. The Afghan uh, security forces have made a big progress, but they cannot operate on their own. They lack critical um, resources, they lack critical enablers, and they still need train, uh, training and mentoring. If we just pull up tomorrow, they will probably collapse. That means that there will be far more insecurity uh, than there has to be uh, after 2014. It means that the Taliban will be able to get far more territory and that contestation among various power brokers and the government, power brokers and the Taliban will be far more intense. So we can, inf we, we might perhaps not be in the position of securing and stabilizing Afghanistan wholesale, but we have an ability to influence how much insecurity there will be. The second important component is to emphasize governance. Even with the limited resources, even with the diminishing influence, we need to find finally the will to say that governance matters and that we are prepared to uh, strongly emphasize um, good governance uh, in Afghanistan and that we are willing to uh, 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 use punitive action if uh, good governance is constantly being compromised. So what we can do, we for example can prioritize focus on corruption by saying that especially corruption in the Afghan army uh, should not be tolerated. We should focus on um, breaking up the patronage networks that are fragmenting uh, the Afghan army and instead encourage that people are promoted on the basis of merit or that a particular ethnic group is not constantly put into the most violent and contested areas as enlisted soldiers. Uh, we should uh, try to make far more focus on uh, going after at least the most egregious violators of, um, uh, uh, of human rights uh, and the, the most egregious perpetrators of, uh, of abuses and uh, insist that these people um, will face sanctions, even if the sanctions are as limited as, for example, denying visas to them or their relatives for coming to live and study in the United States. Um, we also, uh, I think, need to think very differently about how we use economic aid. We have become used to showering uh, Afghanistan with money and sort of smothering it in, in love and buying love by, by placing huge amounts of resources in especially areas that um, have been highly contested by the insurgents. The result has not been that we bought love, that the Afghan population likes us better. The, uh, the result has been that uh, a lot of people profited from insecurity and instability because that meant that money was going there. The money was being spent uh, um, in ways that uh, really resulted no, uh, in no sustainability and often has been counterproductive. So on the one hand, few resources uh, mean economic difficulties, but it also allows us to be far more diligent about insisting on monitoring. So not uh, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars are siphoned off and stolen from the country that's our aid. 
And we need to be very careful about how we engage with the power brokers and how we engage with militias that are emerging, including those that are very much sponsored and grown by the United States and ISAF, and that is the Afghan uh, local police. Uh, this is an organization that we believe will provide the st uh, stop gag measures uh, of uh, insecurity in areas where the Afghan police and Afghan military cannot be deployed. Um, but we're once again very much focused on immediate shorter military expediency. The chance is very high that after 2014 these militias will go loose and they will become um, uh, very much the source of insecurity. They will become the trigger of conflict, military conflict. They will pull in the Taliban because they will start predating on communities. Uh, they some do it already. They, they extort communities, abuse them, uh, demand money. And the chance is that, these, uh, that the abuse and predation by uh, the Afghan local police and other militias will only increase. And so we once again should not be deluded in thinking the immediate and only objective is to be the Taliban. Uh, on the battlefield tomorrow, hence stand up the militias, but to think about the long term. And that means thinking about how such forces encourage or discourage stability. And uh, finally, um, uh, we need to um, uh, focus on how we engage with the power brokers. Do we want to continually giving them the blank checks that we have been giving them because they are promising us that they'll take on the Taliban? And sometimes they are effective at it. Or do we once again want to think that, uh, and do, do we understand finally, that uh, stability requires a degree of legitimacy that the current regime doesn't have? And so uh, uh, embracing uh, the power brokers because they seem seemingly tomorrow effective on the battlefield in the Taliban, however, likely means that there will be conflict and the Taliban a year down the road because uh, the power brokers uh, are so grating uh, to the population and allow um, insurgent groups like the Taliban to gain traction with the population.